Hello there, welcome back to another video here on the Master Moldy channel. And today, if you watched yesterday's video, you already know what we're doing. If you looked at the title and thumbnail, you know what we're doing. We're going to be taking my Moss Isley diorama. Remember the diorama that I built based off the Master Builder set and said that I would never be breaking it apart? Well, today I am and turning it into a modular to start off a brand new chapter for the Lego City, which, by the way, the last few episodes of City Updates, which has spanned the last few months, I've been trying to think of a name and we haven't got any suggestions. So I'm going to go with Taylor Town, named after my fiance because she does so much help behind the camera, whether it be sorting sets and actually half of all these sets, all the Harry Potter, all the Minecraft actually belong to her. So I now dub thy city Taylor Town in her honor. And that just helps when referring to the Lego City so we're not confused with the actual theme, Lego City. But Taylor Town is going to be transported into a galaxy far, far away. And it may be a long, long time before we actually see what it looks like because I'm trying to work on getting probably about a modular out a week unless there's anything else that needs doing in the city. And we've already got it pretty packed. In fact, if I lift this 8080 out of the way, you can see that the city was nearing completion with all the other modulars that I have built. Now, this Friends Tower will be staying at least for the minute in Taylor Town, but the others I'm not too fond of. I would love to still have a Lego store and perhaps Star Wars it up, make it look like perhaps Doc Ondar's from Galaxy's Edge and had a few other Star Wars references there. But the Animal Tower, it's cool that we've got a massive fish tank, but it does somewhat break the immersion when looking at the city as a whole. So I'll probably end up rebuilding that into a fish tank and having that somewhere else in the Lego room. And as for the other two, I'm not really liking this wall and even the little subway superhero calf we built on the bottom, they just don't line up to each other. So my plan is to create a Tatooine tower and theme it around either Moss Eisley. I feel like Moss Eisley can be summed up into a 16 by 16 modular. So what I'll probably actually do is add a few different stories like Watto's workshop and also add a reference to either the Lars Homestead or Kenobi and even something to do with Jabba's Palace. It looks like we've got the four levels sorted out for that. And then we can do one on Naboo. We've got Coruscant. We've got so many Star Wars worlds we can fill this city with. And I know you all at home prefer the Star Wars stuff or wherever you're watching this video right now. And I have already added some speeders into the city. We've got Mandos. We've got this Hoth one that does tie into the Mandalorian. So perhaps we can have some sort of speeder chase in our Lego city. We've also got Doc. This city is currently full of references. The Friends Tower, which does have the Big Bang Theory flat at the top. I will look at changing that, but that will be months before we get back to that. We've got Gandalf and Frodo. And then we've got 3PO driving the X-34 land speeder and Han and Kira in their speeder too. So we've already got a few Star Wars things. And of course, you would have seen the giant 8080. Let me put that back so you can see what the city looks like right now. And then we can get a before and after for the thumbnail. So right now it is lacking. There's a giant 8080 in the way. There's not too much color. I feel like adding, especially the Tatooine Tower, nice and tan. The Friends Tower does have a little bit but it will need to be reworked at some point in the future because it just doesn't look as good as I'd like it. The details are definitely on the interior and that's just how the actual sets were decorated. I guess the central perk calf at the bottom looks quite cool and perhaps I need to work on the decking of that a little bit, but we definitely need to improve the exterior of the other flats. Perhaps even just get an advertisement or a billboard or perhaps I can whack a custom message there and try and get people to sponsor my Lego city. If you do want to sponsor this city and would like a custom message put on the side of that building, drop a super thanks and let me know what you'd like it to say. I'll start 
selling it out to the audience. Unlike most videos where I already have the thing built, I've actually still got the diorama built. So today I'm gonna to take you on the journey as we build the first Star Wars modular and hopefully this is the first Lego Star Wars City. I did have a quick search before recording this video and I couldn't find anyone that has built a Lego Star Wars modular city. There's a load of giant mocks out there of Moss Eisley, but no one's taken inspiration from that and decided to build their own city. So I hope you enjoy this series on the channel. Hopefully we can get a bit more done with the city. And that does mean there probably won't be too many more mocks. I have still got to do instructions for that. I know I promised you June. They'll be up in July for sure. I'll probably turn it into a video so I can show you the whole process behind the instructions. They'll be up on the members discord and on Rebrickable. So if you'd like to build the bongo, do consider joining the Brick Tier membership. Or if you just want to talk over on discord, we've got a bunch of new sets. I'm not going to be making a video when Jedi Bob's images have been released. And I think we might have already got the first image. So join the channel discord by becoming a member. And I look forward to all the conversations we'll have over there. I completely didn't realize I wasn't recording the last couple of minutes. So I have started pulling off the Lego minifigures. And that is because even though I have dusted this diorama for yesterday's video, you can see there is a lot of dust where the minifigures were blocking the way and I couldn't get to them. So I've started pulling off the minifigures and then we can take a look at the other bricks we'll need to turn this into a modular. I think the plates will be fine because if I remember I did build up the bottom. So we might need a few more plates to make this a 16 by 16. I think it's a two 12 by 16s at the minute. So I'll need to modify that a little bit, but we also need a load more of these bricks for the walls. And I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna get these recessed chairs in and make it look flush from the outside. I might have to just back them up to the sides, but we'll see once we've got the base of the modular. So I've been working on the modular Moss Eisley for a few hours here and there, and I've actually took some time away from it and ended up parting out a set that you will see in a future video. I'm not gonna spoil anything yet, but I did end up breaking one of the fragile dark red pieces. Thankfully, it only snapped off two shards of Lego and hopefully I'll be able to glue them back because it is a printed piece. And I know it's not an expensive printed piece, but if I'm able to glue it back together and it can hold for the model, then there's no reason buying someone else's. And though the modular's not looking, well, it's not looking too great. At least we've got a door. A door is more than nothing. I have marked out where I'd like all the characters to go and try to keep it a little similar to the diorama, but obviously we've got much less space. Just to show you the size comparison, we're looking at two thirds of the space on the diorama. And I've managed to play out where I want the bar coming on the right side of the wall. So it's only gonna be half of the bar. And I've also shrunk the boost just to keep the same amount of space between, which is quite nice when you're packing it full of so many minifigures. And these are actually all the minifigures well, all the characters that came in the set, we've got an updated 3PO. Kenobi is the printed robe one, which I think was from either Kenobi's hut or one of the many land speeders we got. Of course, I would love to get my hands on the land speeder, no longer exclusive C3PO with that dual molded leg. We've also got the sand troopers and the Jawa that I forgot. I don't have an R2D2 with back printing yet. So this is just one of the regular R2-D2s. I probably have quite a few of that minifigure. We've got all our aliens at the front. Actually, we've got the Biff and Qualish there as well. And I'm hoping to fit most of these inside the cantina. Of course, the Jawas, we might see some Jawas actually inside the cantina in A New Hope, but I'm not gonna include the Jawas in the cantina because that Jawa has a very special moment outside the cantina I'd like to recreate. And same with 3PO and R2, droids are not welcome in Chalman's cantina, so I'll have to give them a scene outside. But now let's break apart the diorama, which I really still don't want to do, and see how many other parts I've got. I'm not a fan of this 
smooth tan wall and there's a few different bricks that lego use in their ucs set i'd like to get them out and just slowly build up the modular base and then i'll explain the door i think at the end because i'm not quite sure if this is going to work how i envision it but if it does it would look really really cool I've recorded a time lapse of me actually building this Moss Eisley diorama because if I try and give you updates throughout the day, it kind of went well with the bongo, but I always forget to do it. So once I cleared the room on my desk, I got some bricks out, especially those modified bricks, which as I mentioned, would just help to liven up the walls of the diorama. And towards the start, I am back and forth with my part drawers quite a bit. So I switch up the angle in a minute and it gives you a better look at which parts I'm going for and just how I build all of my mocks. I also clean the mock as we go on because as I said earlier it is very very dusty between where the minifigures have stood and though I did already dust it once you're lifting up some of these parts they all have gaps in so dust really does get anywhere and the first thing I really did when I started was to swap out all of these plates that I used to hold minifigures. I don't think that I ever explained, but the black studs were where minifigures would be, and the grey jumper plates, for instance, were where I was positioning the stools, so I knew roughly where I'd be sitting some of the minifigures. So once I'd swapped them out, I started putting down the tables. One of these tables does actually change later on, but got some two by two plates to make sure I could start putting the tables down and constructing the region around the bar. And when I put the bar down, I tried a few different things because it was going to go into the wall. So I initially had it raised two blocks and a plate on top of the plate that it sat on and had another plate to bring it that three block height on the wall and then started moving some of the grey plates from initially my own collection. And then I soon realised that I had a bunch of tan and grey plates on the diorama you can see i start to pull it apart the base went straight back up to my shelf ready for the next display which i'm really excited to start working on some more dioramas and then i start pulling apart first off these front grey ones because i needed them for the round bit a bit more dust in here and there as i said i do dust quite a bit through this video and then when i started positioning these troopers to see how high the bar would be I didn't really like the height that Lego used and I know it's a bit more accurate but I just felt that for a modular build the bar should be a bit lower and a bit more mid arm height so that the minifigures can actually hold their drinks on the bar. So that's what I did, load it by a brick, also use the troopers again to make sure that the height from outside the bar was okay for all the other minifigures because we didn't have enough space for them to have their arm out in front of the bar and I knew from quite early on, it was gonna get quite cramped really, really fast. I've then taken a bunch of different tiles from the diorama plate and I'm just transferring them over, trying to keep some of the patterns because I did use a very similar pattern to where I'm standing minifigures on the diorama and now I'm standing them on the modular, which was such fun to bring across because I knew they already worked and I liked the design and I'd already planned it out so it was past me helping future me in this case. Now a lot of the plates and tiles from the diorama plate I don't end up using and I do try and keep the mess to a minimum. I've popped off the chairs so I know what shape that I want the chairs but there's a lot of parts lying around. Right now, I'm actually looking for something to cover the back of the chair and I have a panel piece in mind, but I empty my sticker collection of pieces that I haven't yet removed the stickers from, so I do need to get on that soon. And I know I have another bag, so after looking for it, I find actually three of the pieces, but I use the two from the Razor Crest. No need to remove the stickers because they're gonna be covered by the chairs. And I'm trying to recess the chairs half a stud in to these panel pieces it means i have to modify the builds because not only do i have to remove the bottom plate at the top i also have to connect it using a two by two play modified tile the one with the two studs on one side and then have to get that working it turns out all i had to do was raise the panel by one plate and then include another two plates on top to make it match the height of the bricks later on so this chair design was even better than the other one and you've all heard countless times how much I enjoyed building the other one so I think 
This might be my best mock design I have ever put to work yet. And then I start building up the wall. You can see a few of the modified bricks. I'm not quite sure what they're called, but they're the ones with the lines on them. Some one by four tan masonry bricks. And there's the wooden bark like ones. I've tried to stick to a dark nougat for the wood effect ones and a dark bluish gray for the lines though. For both of these, I do use the odd tan piece throughout this build. And I've also then modified the bar to match the height of the bricks because I think I included an extra plate. There's much, much more tiling to be done with this mock. And I noticed later on that I really should have put some dark tan one by ones around the floor. And I think that's the only thing I'd change looking back at me building it. I really should have put some dark tan one by ones, maybe even a one by two here and there, just to switch up the floor and get it looking as detailed as the side. But between you and me, there's so many minifigures, you barely even notice the floor towards the end. So the few that I add last minute don't really help. Now, as you can see, I do switch up the camera angle. I'm not sure it gives you a better look at the mock, but it definitely gives you a better look at the process with me back and forth from the drawers. But I haven't even needed to visit a drawer yet. I'm trying to get the chairs in. I think they look so, so nice. The fact that I'm able to recess them half a stud into the wall and then that panel piece just closes up not only the outside of the 16 by 16 modular, but also the other side of the wall where I'm going to have the stools. You can see I'm not only using parts from my small drawers, but also the bigger drawers just to get the bricks that I need because I do have something in mind. Though it is worth saying that column of one by two bricks I have just built is quite weak. So I did end up reinforcing that with a corner piece and completely changing the idea. I lowered the decoration on the side just so I could get an arch in because it really needed an arch just to close in that booth and make it feel like its own scene. They're included in the diorama and I quite like the pocket it creates because it makes the whole modular look bigger even though it's closing in on the wall because we have the extension around the corner. It does look really nice and I'm sizing up the windows right now. I'm not sure if I want them to be two or three bricks tall and I think I settled with three but I tried it out a few times. If you don't know what you were trying to go for, I definitely recommend placing a few bricks down, seeing if you like it. And if you do, then keeping the one you like better. And I'm very happy I went with the three bricks tall because when we've got minifigures in there, two bricks just would have seemed too low and it would have looked very funny from the outside because it'd be closer to the floor than the ceiling. So I'm happy with my decision. Again, a bunch of different modified bricks, which really helped to bring it to life, not just from the inside, but also when looking at the finished product in my Lego city, which you will get to see later. So I'll keep spoilers to a minimum. I put Han and Greedo in there and a few times you'll see me put in a few different characters in just to see how the scene looks, how big the modular looks around it, because I don't want to pack the minifigures too tightly. And I know I'm trying to fit nearly 21 minifigures in a 16 by 16 space, but I want it to feel like a packed Moss Eisley, not like a tub of minifigures that I've just tried to stud down everyone I can. Get the hustle and bustle of Moss Eisley across in Lego form. And I think at the minute I'm finishing the other table, I do jump back and forth. I get very distracted very, very easily. And, and that's not just when I'm building Lego, but I am gradually working up the walls around. I've got something in mind for the door and I introduce a brand new brick made with a round stud, a square one by one plate, and then another round stud on top. I believe I've got this from the UCS set as well. I don't really remember what the UCS set looked like. It might have been handy to have a few instructions from the UCS set to hand so I could steal a bit of the design they go with, especially by the front door, that arch with the recessed bricks in. That does look really cool though. I don't think I'd have fit it on the modular. Again, I'm trying out the windows. I was gonna go with two, but two really didn't fit. So I ended up only putting the one and that meant I could fit a ton more of that modified brick around. And now we built quite high. We can 
start to finish off i don't think i start tiling it yet but i'm definitely keeping in mind trying to get the bricks to line up and you'll see what i mean as i continue placing the bricks down but you don't want a corner where the brick sticks out to then not stick out on the other side because it really makes your tiling job harder at the end and if any of you have built your own modulars i'm sure you'll know what i mean because lego have very similar techniques when putting together theirs you want as strong a build as you can have and that does mean that quite a few times i have to switch up the bricks where i want some bricks to overlap just to reinforce the rest of the build but personally i think this is looking a bit better than the diorama i built just from them modified bricks that i'm adding and i really wish that i did this sooner i might have to revisit that and add a few of these modified bricks to the instructions for you all to build especially if you already purchased it i'll just add some instructions onto the page when i get the time but once again i've switched up my design on the door i know roughly what i want to do with the sliding door feature but i'm not quite planning that far ahead and trying to get the rest of the walls built and more importantly the bars I've noticed that I completely forgot about these stalls. I'm just using Han to make sure all the minifigures fit and they're not bumping into any of the walls. And once I'm happy with that, I can finish off bricking. And there we go. We start to tile the wall, which is basically saying it is ready to be completed. And I've left gaps for some corner tiles as well, which I soon realized I didn't include any studs on the top. So they actually turn out to be plates so I can attach to the next level. Otherwise, this would be a very short tower for the Lego City. As far as the bar goes, I picked my favorite parts from the middle and I actually went with opposing middle and outward bar elements. And I'm not sure how much sense that's making, but you'll see when I put them together that I take the giant bar from one side and then the little decorations from the other side, get the best of both of the bars and then the cups or the juices or the trans one by one bricks with the studs on top. I then put on the bar to act as drinks for whoever's standing there. You'll see Ponda Bubba gets very attached to his drink later on when the Imperials arrive. And as it's a modular, I will be closing in all four sides I've mentioned before about leaving one side open and I'm still wondering if that's what I should have done on the front wall. Have it so that I can detach it. But I think the fact that they are modular is good enough for me because if I want to see inside, I can just pop off the top and that allows me to get a story to be told on every single one of these walls, which again, when you're squeezing so many minifigures in here, you really need all the space you can get. So you can't see what I'm placing down too well, but I'm trying to keep similar patterns with the modified bricks. And you'll also have seen the plates that I placed down, as I said earlier, we need something to attach to the next level. And I think these three plates are all I use. But as we get to the top, I'm starting to think here about that door connection and add in another snot brick. Snot, by the way, stands for studs, not on top, which is a common acronym used across Lego mock builders. And this is where I run into some troubles because as I'm tiling up, I needed to have a tile which I thought stuck out a little bit to cover my hinge work for the door, but it turns out I did need that space on top. So I overcomplicated it a little bit, but I wanted to have a brick going underneath the cross between the two tiles just to really reinforce the strength of the top of the build because we're going to have another three towers at least, well, three modular blocks on this tower above this ground floor so i want this to be as strong as possible and we might even possibly get a roof above that so that two by four will be going later on as i said i do find another way to fix the door but that is what i'm thinking of now trying to not only organize my pieces you can see i have a pile of tan bricks a pile of brown plates this is probably the neatest the desk has been when i've been building mocks and i've included a few more studs at the back here i'm actually building the stage and you don't really get a good look at this because even once the build has done 
I cover it with the three biffs that I hide in the modular. But what I've done here is got two corner two by two plates, put one tile on top and then a jump plate so I can offset the minifigures a bit and then included a one by two tile in the middle. As I said, I tried to show it off, but as this is a time lapse, you don't really get a good look. And now we're starting work on the door frame. So as you saw, I tipped out the tan piece I needed, put the drawer back. I've already got too many pieces on my desk. And now I'm starting to realize that the tile isn't actually going to work for what I need. But I've included one of the bricks that is actually used in the bar. If you do own the UCS set, it's not the strongest, but I realized I had this underside tile, this four by eight piece, I believe, from the t-rex dinosaur skull and later on i do strip the sticker off just so you've not got the specifications plaque on the other side of the door and i actually quite like the black now i'm using my 3d printed hand mat just to make sure all the lego bricks are down firmly and now begins the whole long and tiring process of sorting the lego bricks or at least all the lego that i got out and is spared from the diorama i don't actually break down the plate for the diorama because i am planning on building another diorama soon i just strip it of the tiles and i'm slowly filing this into all of my drawers i do try and for my back sake bend my knees when i'm going to the lower drawers but sometimes it's easier just to reach over and put the odd few bricks away so as i said the only piece that i don't break down is the underlying plate from the diorama because that has gone straight back on the base ready for the next diorama which i'm looking at doing another corridor scene because they seem to come across so well and also any other scene i feel like i'd just turn into a modular to add on top of the moss eisley and all the other towers yet to come so instead of filing everything back into the drawers i've got a few piles you might be able to make out the two by two corner bricks the one by four bricks i think i've got one by three bricks there i've got a few of the other modified bricks which do have their tubs out so i'm just sorting them into columns of six which is how high my drawers can fit so that when i'm putting them away later i do miss a handful of them but for the most part i can file them straight into the drawer and it saves me having to open and close a lot of the drawers a lot of times though so you'll notice i've already opened that jumper drawer i'll leave an arrow on screen pointing to the one it is it's I think the bottom right drawer is one up from the bottom right drawer on the middle right unit. So keep your eye out on that drawer because I find so many jumper tiles or jumper modified plates throughout putting these away. I must have opened and closed the drawer like 10 times each, but I'm making a light work of this and I really wish I could sort this fast at real speed, but it is a long and the process is worth it in the end because it means I don't have to spend a day sorting this in a few weeks time when it is backed up. So you can see I've got a drawer out now and I'm just filing all the pieces away. I find a few more jumper plates, no doubt, and all the other loose pieces at the start, mainly the ones that I used for mocking out the modular in the first place, like the black and tan colored studs. And again, a few more jumper plates. And now we are ready to take a look at the finished modular. So you've seen me build the modular Moss Isley. If I called the diorama Mock Isley, does that mean this is Mod Isley? Let me know down in the comments, but I've added some stickers. I've taken away the massive T-Rex skull sticker from the Jurassic Park set. And I'm very happy I got that piece because that comes in very, very handy. And I've added every single minifigure maybe not in the modular there are three for the outside which i will be placing on the city in a minute first let's take a look at i think there's 18 minifigures inside the moss isley cantina not only did i manage to keep to the 16 by 16 square brickage that i use on my lego city it's sort of a shelf lego city but i've also kept this to seven bricks tall which was my original format i've sort of hopped between seven and eight bricks and i think as far as the modulars go that i have in my city at the minute summer seven summer eight i think i'm going to stick with seven because it allows me to put a roof or a small fifth floor on top i think i get like four bricks which is about half of this which should be plenty for a roof or at least someone lounging on the fifth floor 
but you can see that 3PO and R2 aren't very happy that droids aren't allowed and they've actually caught eye of their own wanted poster as well and this is the cantina sign I think all three of these stickers are from the Master Builder series, Moss Eisley Cantina. And the third and final figure we have on the outside has actually stolen Luke's land speeder, or perhaps bought it off him, but this Jawa is not in the correct seat. It's in the passenger seat, trying to steer. I've actually managed to clip the hand to the steering wheel, which is quite nice. It's quite dusty so i'll need to dust it before adding it to the city but that allows me just to build a bit of story we'll have the jawa just driving along perhaps even on the pavement it hasn't even made it to the road and then three pion r2 outside the cantina but taking a look at the modular you'll first notice that the door was able to open and it does come straight off but it does mean you can open it and close it as with my other modulars we had to have a door you can open and close initially as i would have said earlier it was a plate too small so i've actually given it the step as well so it's a step up into the cantina and then kenobi's just stepped down inside and this plate on the back not only makes it look really good from the inside because there's none of the underside of well i guess there's a little underside of studs showing here but none on the door which finishes it up quite nicely but also stops it really being able to wiggle. There's about the same amount of flex as some of these other walls would probably have if they stood alone. So I'm happy with how firm it is in there. I would like to have got it in solid and did the same the other side, but I just couldn't afford to use the extra stud on the inside because we've got so many minifigures sat down. In fact, if I can tilt this up, you can see we'll start with Han and Greedo having their shoe out taken straight from the diorama in fact Chewie's just walking away from Han so Greedo's nicked his seat and in front of Chewie we've got Figurin Dan and the modal nodes which we do have only half of them but all three fit and there is a very small stage as well that the back two are on then we've got Co I can't remember their name but the Chadra fan and the Ithorian sat at a table. Well, one stood and one's sort of got their eye in the wall decoration, but they fit just in front of, I think it was Malloc and the Imperial Spy, and there is a Trandoshan as well. Just by the door, we've got Kenobi and Luke, as I said, entering the bar, and Dr. Cornelius Everson already has his eyes on Luke and you just know he's about to cause some mischief and Ponder Bubba's guarding his drink because the two sand troopers are raiding the bar you can see that the barkeeper is not very happy about it at all and a lot of people think this is Chowman Chowman is actually a Wookiee so perhaps Chowman is this Chewbacca minifigure just going around making sure everyone's got their figs but I definitely prefer it to be Chewbacca and I'd love to get a Chowman minifigure one day but they didn't give it to us with this cantina and I guess you could just use any other Wookiee and that fits in a 16 by 16 by 7 bricks and 2 plates if you are including the top and bottom but as the pavement is increased by those 2 plates you won't notice it and makes the first floor, the ground floor of Tatooine Tower. So let's go and find a place for this to fit in the Lego City. Currently, we already have our five towers taken up by the Superhero Food Tower, the Lego Brand Tower, the Friends Tower, which is staying at least until the new year. We then have the Lego Store Tower, the Lego Tower, and the Animal Tower. And for now, I'm not actually going to get rid of any of them because I have worked quite hard on building all of these. But what I'm going to do is take Emmett's house, stack it on top of the villain's pub and try not to break any more lampposts. And then what I'll do is because these are on a connected base plate, these I think are on a connected base plate. If not, I'm going to put these two and this tower with the animal tower. And then that leaves me a 16 by 16 base plate that I can use for Moss Eisley. And then we can jumble them around a bit. And some of you may be wondering why I've decided to go a different direction with the city. And to be honest, 
I don't really know. I don't think I've stopped long enough to think about it, but I knew that I wanted to do more Star Wars and I do want to do other themes as well from Lego. And I will be reviewing the odd set here and there, similar to the dream set that I got when that theme was started. But you all seem to like the Star Wars Lego above everything else. So I think this channel will always be mainly Star Wars Lego. And we've always got to link it back to Star Wars somehow, much like the Ninjago Wookiee Fluttercraft. So it makes sense making a Star Wars city. It's sort of the next big mock. I'll be working on this for the next few months. And I do think this is going to take me into the new year. I know we're only halfway through a year but I can already see myself working on this every couple of weeks, if not every week, and gradually building up more and more towers, finishing it off the street, because we never finish off the pavement. It's the closest it's got to being finished, and we are now taking another turn, going down the Star Wars route, and hopefully it also helps me house some of the smaller speeders, because I've been putting them on the roads anyway, so any smaller builds from Star Wars I'll be able to put into the city and I guess it will grow as I'm building more mocks, buying more sets and building more modulars. It's also a fun way to get something like the cantina. The diorama looks good but with the city I can stack them, I can fit a few more because they're slightly smaller and get a few other iconic scenes from Star Wars in a more permanent display rather than having to break them down because I've only got room for six. In fact, I do only have room for six dioramas. As we've got five towers of four, that's 20 scenes we can make from Star Wars, minus the four from Friends, and I'll probably keep the Lego tower for now as well. But gradually, I can be breaking the others down and building more Star Wars locations. So I've managed to pair up the buildings that I wanted paired up. We've got the animal and the food, which I'm now realizing is probably not the best combination, especially if you're one of those chickens on the roof. I really do like that greenhouse though. We got the Lego tower with the friends, and I suppose once I'm on my second Star Wars tower, I'll probably mix these up. And the best thing about using a Mills plate, which I will show you how to put together if you perhaps haven't seen the million other tutorials on YouTube, because it really is I can't even say it's overused. It's just the best way of putting these together. It was so easy to snap them off. It provides support for all of your buildings and you really wanna have a support brick every four or five studs in each direction. I know some people will double up this four by four, this two by four even, and have a four by four shaped brick in the middle. But really, I think that is enough. But every couple of bricks, perhaps, Every four bricks, four or five bricks, you should really have another brick support in it. And that is just to stop the plate from bowing. Though, if you aren't like me and don't have access to some eight by eight plates, and perhaps you're using some four by four plates, then just use these two by twos in the corner of each four by four plate, every two or three bricks. And that'll be enough to support it. You then put your build on top, or really what you can do is build on top of it because of how strong they are. And this is why I have my 3D printed hammer, but you can just push it down. You just wanna make sure not to put too much pressure on the top. And it's really helpful if you have a supporting wall on the inside, because that helps push down the middle of the build. But that is then the first tower started. And as you can see, it definitely stands out to the rest. It actually goes really, really well with the aquarium. So I would like to see what it looks like in the middle. And this is what Mills plates are used for. You can just rotate all your different shops and all your different modulars around. And it really is so easy. I'll get you the road and show you them because they're also Mills plated. As you can see where the friends bit used to be, we have Chandler and Joey sitting outside, but it doesn't quite fit where it is. And if I grab the other Mills plate, you can see that that has a corner on it and you can't exactly move that along. But there is another Mills plate on the right hand side. So what if we were to slide this all the way over and then grab the other Mills plate, which I put way too far out of reach to have it at hand for this shot. And with these road panels that I'm connecting, all you've got to do is disconnect the two by fours or the one by fours, which you can see 
on the right hand side and these are the connecting pieces or in this case the not connecting pieces because we don't want them connecting to the end column which we'll take a look at in a second as well if you are new around here because i know we've got a load of subscribers since i last took a look at this lego city so i'm not sure how many of you even realized this existed but we can then connect these two roads with these two by fours do the exact same thing over here and it's so easy to rearrange this is only a shelf display what i mean by like a lego city shelf is i've got it in two units of this ikea calyx unit i've removed the separating column increased the space similar to all of my other displays up here this is a 48 by 48 base plate this mod on the left and this figure display is built on a 38 by 48 so you could just use the two base plates chops 10 studs off of one of them or even chop five studs off another so they're half and half but what I've decided to do is go with these smaller Lego base plates. We have one, two, 32 by 32. We then have two 16 by 32, three 16 by 32, and a 16 by 16. But that gives us this gap at the end, which takes up three by 48 studs either end. So what I'm going to do once I've finished building, or perhaps between different modular Star Wars blocks, is go back to buildings like this lo-fi girl apartment up here which did have a cmf in once upon a time before i got the smiths display and have a few more iconic scenes perhaps reference some of the marvel buildings which look really really cool i'd love to have a floor of the daily bugle represented as well and perhaps later on i can reference other things like i was talking earlier in the video about having perhaps a donation box there where every time someone donates i think that might get a little hectic if every time someone donates it changes because i might not have made a video in that period so i could always delay them like i do my shorts and i've got a whole long list of them to work for or i could do perhaps a comment of the week so nothing that anyone has to pay for and i'll just highlight a comment and perhaps get a whiteboard tile that I can stick over there and scribble down the comment just in case I do end up doing a video doing a update and then I can show off the comment of the week let me know what you think about that and let me know what you think about the Moss Isley we do have the London Lego store mascot waiting outside so perhaps he's got an order ready but I think this is going to look really really cool especially with not only the Star Wars speeders and this dude driving a hot tub definitely belongs in star wars but also once we've got a few more modulars built and once we've started filling up the sides i don't know what's next i guess we'll have to start lighting some of these modulars so thank you so much for watching let me know if you're as excited as i am about the new lego star wars city and if you are i would appreciate if you smash that like button as well as subscribe before you go so you don't miss out on the next tower i am expecting to do it about a week's time by now if i could keep it up to every week i'll definitely be doing that but if for whatever reason i can't do them weekly i'll do them at least within the eight nine days of the last one so we can get going with this city and actually have a finished city design which is a massive milestone on this channel speaking of milestones we are trying to hit 3,000 subscribers so do please make sure you are subscribed and check out all the videos on your screen. May the bricks be with you always.